At a tourist spot in Paris, a naked woman suddenly appeared, waddling through the crowd. Everyone was immediately surprised and stunned by her. Meanwhile, at the same time, a master pickpocket named Michael started stealing from everyone. He stole wallets, cell phones, and many things he could steal while everyone was too attached to the free show from the naked woman. Turned out, the woman was none other than Michael's friend whom he paid 300 euros to divert everyone's attention so he could steal their belongings. After that, Michael sold the stolen items to a fencer named Baba and got a reward of 900 euros. Somewhere else, a man named Jean planted a bomb inside a doll and gave it to his girlfriend, Zoe. She was assigned to disguise and put the bomb in a building. Despite her doubt, Jean managed to convince her to do the task. After putting on a blonde wig, Zoe entered the building to plant the bomb, but when she was about to leave the bomb, a group of cleaning service staff showed up. She didn't have the heart to kill those people. She finally left the building and called Jean. She told him that there were people inside and she wanted to abort the mission, but the bomb has been set to explode soon. Zoe said that she would throw the bomb into the river but Jean kept telling her to do as planned. She was too scared to do so and decided to hang up the call. Turned out, Jean was with two other men named Rafi and Kristoff. Rafi is the leader of their group. At the same time, Michael was drinking across the street while looking around to find his next pickpocket target when suddenly, he saw Zoe holding a bag and taking off her wig. Michael thought the bag contained valuables and immediately took it when Zoe was off guard. After that, Michael opened the bag, only to find a doll and an old-fashioned telephone. The phone suddenly rang and he decided to pick up the phone. After hearing Jean on the phone, Michael immediately hung up the call and left the bag carelessly on the side of the road. The moment Michael walked away, the bomb exploded and he was thrown away by the shock. Despite exploding not at the targeted location, the bomb still sent terror to the citizen. Rafi immediately sent a threat to the French government that the bomb was the start of many others, and that in the next 36 hours, the city of Paris will fall to its knees. Journalists flocked to ask about the city's safety to Mr. Victor as the head of French intelligence. Victor guaranteed that the perpetrators of the bombing would be caught soon and promised that the Bastille Day Parade will continue normally. Bastille Day is the Independence Day of France. Turned out, Michael was recorded by a security camera. His photo was sent to the CIA and Interpol. At the CIA Surveillance Unit headquarters in Paris, a special agent named Sean Breyer received a stern warning from his superiors, Tom and Karen, because he was too careless on his missions and tend to disobey orders, but according to him, he took all those actions because he had calculated the risks and that the important thing was that the mission was over. The news of the bombing reached the CIA. In total, four people lost their lives as victims of the bombing. After getting Michael's photo, his identity was successfully identified. Michael was born in Las Vegas, US. His father was a casino boss and his mother was a realtor. Michael used to be a child who excels in school and wanted to go to college, but when his father died and left him with his gambling debts, Michael was dropped from high school. Since then, he often commits fraud in various countries to survive, until finally, he ended up in France. It is known that Michael has called his mother twice in the past 18 months using the same payphone. Therefore, Sean was assigned to arrest Michael secretly in the apartment around the payphone, and later, he would be handed over to the French government. Knowing that the authorities were looking for him, Michael knew something was off. He decided to run away, but at the same time, Sean managed to find Michael's apartment, right when he was climbing the roof to get out. Oh. Sean tried to catch him but Michael finally managed to run away. He found someone just parked a bike. He stole the key and tried to run away using the bike but Sean saw him and grabbed him, making him fall from the bike. After that, Michael was interrogated. Sean asked his motives to do the bombing and what organization he had been with all this time. Frightened, Michael said that he was the one who put the bag but he only stole it from a woman who was wearing a blonde wig. From the phone at that time, Michael could tell that the woman's name was Zoe and thought that her bag was filled with valuables. After all the explanations, Sean finally believed Michael's words. To prove that Michael was really a pickpocket, Sean asked him to steal his wallet from him. Michael managed to do the job amazingly, not only he stole the wallet, but he also took the money and returned the wallet to Sean's pocket. When asked to sit back down, Michael secretly took a knife from the table. At Jean's house, Zoe looked very stressed because she thought she had killed the four people in the incident. Meanwhile, Rafi and Jean were confused about the boy who had stolen their bag. Shortly Rafi and his men came to Jean's house to kill Zoe. 
Knowing that, Jean immediately asked her to run away from there. When Rafi arrived, they couldn't find Zoe. They then tried to trace her phone's signal and found the location. The only thing was, they didn't know that the phone was with Sean and Michael. To avert suspicion, Rafi disguised as a mailman. Realizing something was wrong, Sean got ready with his gun while Michael managed to cut his ties and secretly ran away from there. Sean then attacked Rafi and his men but they managed to run away after kicking his face. Sean then reported what just happened to Tom but Tom only asked to arrest Michael as soon as possible. Sean didn't obey the rules because he knew there was something bigger behind this. He decided to also look for Zoe's whereabouts to dig up further information. At the office, Victor was introduced to the commander of a French special police called Rapid, which turned out to be Rafi. Suddenly, they received a report that there was a terrorist in the Arabian immigrant settlement. Rafi and all members of the Rapid police were assigned to check there. When they finally arrived, they immediately raided the place, while one of them secretly installed a bomb to frame the immigrants there and reported a false report of it. All immigrants were finally arrested and Michael remained the main fugitive. Elsewhere, Michael who didn't know where to go, visited Baba to hide from the authorities. After hearing the explanation, Baba finally took him to his house on the top floor, but when Michael was not looking, Baba's family suddenly left. It turned out that Baba had been paid by the government to arrest Michael. His family was promised to get citizenship for his contribution. Knowing that, Michael panicked and tried to run away. All the doors were locked. Outside, Rafi and his rapid team had arrived. Fortunately, Michael found a crack in the wall. He made a hole there and hid from them, waiting for the perfect time to run. After that, he ran outside but without him knowing, a sniper was already standing by on the roof, waiting for him. Luckily, Sean came to save him before he was shot dead. Zoe managed to escape to her friend's base and asked them for shelter because she was in trouble. Later that afternoon, Sean and Michael came after getting information about where Zoe was. Zoe's friends were easily brought to their knees but several other went outside and set fire to Sean's car. They also took Zoe and flee from there. Sean was forced to hijack the car from a passerby to catch them but they were already gone. After that, Sean found out where one of Zoe's friends worked. He and Michael immediately went there. Since Zoe's friend knew him, he told Michael to get inside instead and get Zoe's friend's ID card. With his ability to pickpocket, Michael analyzed the situation quickly and made a pickpocketing scheme as neat as possible until finally, he got the ID card. They went straight to the address on the ID card and as expected, Zoe was there. Sean threatened Zoe to give her a lesson. Sean knew that Zoe was not a terrorist and that she was nothing more than a courier for the bomb. After that, Zoe finally opened up and told Sean that her boyfriend, Jean, ordered her. They went to Jean's apartment but on the way, they ran into Rafi and fortunately, they were still able to escape. <laughs> Zoe then told the chronology of when she was told to bring the bomb. The bomb was intended as a form of attack against fascism, but because there were people in that building, she decided to abort the mission. Beyond that, she didn't know anything. She never knew what were the motives behind the attack. Somewhere else, a massive anti-fascist demonstration took place due to an unprovoked attack on Arab immigrants in the mosque. Online demonstrations were also initiated by some random people to gather supporters to carry out the anti-fascism movement. In a short time, there were already a very large number of supporters for the movement. The situation was even more heated when a video of police torturing Arab demonstrators is spread on the internet which turned out to be nothing more than a scene made by Rafi to make the situation even more chaotic. Arriving at Jean's apartment, they found out that Jean was hanged to death by Rafi. Zoe was devastated to find this. Sean examined the body and found a tattoo on Jean's arm. He also found out that Jean was a part of Rapid, moreover, was the captain. Sean finally realized that several people had been disguised as police, including Jean and Rafi. He immediately reported that to Tom. He also told Tom that Michael and Zoe were with him. He reported about the corrupt rapid squad was the one who carried out the bombing and slandered Arab immigrants who were in the mosque. Karen said if this was beyond the limits of the CIA's authority and would hand over the case to the France intelligence. Therefore, they were going to report this to the Minister of Internal Affairs, Victor, and hand over Zoe and Michael to him. The next day, 
Karen met Victor and told him that the real culprit of the bombing incident was the undercover police, not the Arab immigrants, which means that there is a terrorist conspiracy among the police. Karen then handed over the witnesses who knew about this. After being told the location where Sean, Zoe, and Michael were, Victor ordered his men to pick up the three of them, but suddenly, Victor shot Karen to death. It turned out that the mastermind of the incident was Victor. He deliberately made explosions and threats to slander Arab immigrants so that the city would get even more chaotic. The online demonstrators were also part of their plan to get things more complicated. Victor immediately called Rafi to arrest the three of them and then kill them in a safe place. Shortly after, Rafi's men came to pick up Sean, Zoe, and Michael. Zoe remembered that one of the people in the car was Rafi's man who intended to kill her in the apartment. Sean also saw the same tattoo as Jean's. He suddenly attacked the men inside there. Meanwhile, the online demonstrator had gathered millions of supporters. They asked everyone to demonstrate at the National Bank of France while Victor gave a press conference that he would carry out the maximum level of security by ordering Rapid to secure the National Bank. Sean reported everything to Tom because he knew for sure that Karen was already dead. He told Tom that Victor is the mastermind behind everything. Victor and his men were not terrorists but they intended to rob the France National Bank using a very neat robbery scheme to avoid suspicion. Tom still didn't believe that because Victor is the head of France's intelligence. Sean then decided to secure the bank by himself. Sean finally went along to fight all the police inside the bank and asked both Michael and Zoe to wait. They tried to stop Sean because he was alone but he had made up his mind. He went inside the bank disguised as one of the police and managed to bring down some of the police guarding the front door. He then picked up one of the weapons and went inside. Inside, the police had been given full control of the system. They then turned off all security alarms and cameras inside the bank. Rafi and Kristoff went into the gold reserve room but their goal was not the gold but the digital money worth 500 million euros that they transferred into a flash drive. The police finally found Sean's disguise. Rafi immediately asked all the police to surround and kill him. Zoe and Michael found out that Sean had been cornered and decided to help. They triggered the riot and managed to get inside the bank after charging towards the police's barricade right when Sean was cornered and was about to be shot. Sean went up to the top floor and pointed his gun at Rafi who just finished transferring the money. Unfortunately, Rafi immediately took the flash drive and Sean was attacked with a flashbang. The gunfight happened until finally, Sean put a grenade inside a box and threw it at Rafi and Kristoff. After Rafi was locked inside another room, Sean immediately attacked Kristoff and killed him. Only Rafi remained. Suddenly, Victor called to abort the mission but Rafi said that it was too late since all the money was already transferred to the flash drive. Rafi threatened that if he was caught, he would drag Victor to prison with him. Meanwhile, Sean asked Michael to help him retrieve the flash drive from Rafi. With his stealing ability, Michael managed to retrieve the flash drive. Finally, Rafi realized that the flash drive was gone. He tried to find Michael but everyone there was using a mask. He used his gun to scare everyone and took Zoe hostage to make Michael show himself and return the flash drive. At the office, Victor who didn't want his name tarnished, ordered the police to shoot Rafi because he was a corrupt officer. Rafi was immediately killed by the shots. Amid the commotion, Michael managed to escape from there. After that incident, Victor received an award for discovering the corrupt police syndicate while Michael remained a fugitive. Victor then went to Baba and asked about Michael's whereabouts to him. After Baba said that he didn't know where Michael was, Victor told Baba to spread the news that there was someone interested in paying a high price for the flash drive. After getting information from Baba, Michael came to the agreed place to meet the buyer who turned out to be Victor himself. According to the agreement, Victor would pay $100,000 and make Michael a passport abroad as long as the flash drive is given to him. After giving the flash drive, Michael was taken to a basement where he would be shot by Victor to get rid of any witnesses, but it turned out that it was just Michael's trick, because he, along with Sean and the police, had trapped Victor there to get his confession. At the end of the film, Victor was finally arrested.